Sundance is leaving, Sundance is leaving, Sundance is leaving. Let's go. Yo guys, what is up? I'm back with another video in CK. We are talking about Six Flags Fiesta Texas 2022. And I'm gonna be coming out with a lot of updates on this park for 2022 because honestly, this is one of the biggest things in the coaster community right now when it comes to theories and speculation. Six Flags Fiesta Texas 2022 is going to be a massive year for the park. And well, it's the 30th anniversary. They're gonna be coming out with a huge new attraction next year. Jeffrey doesn't tease this much unless it's gonna be big. And I think it's gonna be huge. So I think it's important that we talk about it, especially since Fiesta Texas is my home park. So I think I'm qualified to be talking about this stuff. Anyways, guys, before we get into it, make sure to hit that subscribe button with the bell notifications. Give it a like if you're enjoying it so far. That said, let's get into the video. Okay, so first I wanna go over some of the teasers and stuff. Wait, hold on. Let's go. On my iPad, let me pull up the will it stay or will it goes. And this is something that Jeffrey likes to do a lot. He's d been doing these from my knowledge since t the summer of 2019 for Daredevil Dive, but he could have been doing them earlier. I'm honestly not sure at all. But actually, I don't know why I'm going over all of these. We know what's going. Sundance Theater is the place that is going. And wow, I mean, I'm not surprised based off of where they've been fencing off land and where all the markers and stuff are. I'm not at all surprised that Sundance Theater is leaving us next year. Or it might be this year. I'm honestly not sure. Hold on. I think I spit on the piano teaser. Bruh, look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the... <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Top of his head. <laughs> anyway, Sundance Theater is leaving, which is going to open up an even bigger plot of land for this new attraction, which I believe is a roller coaster. I don't think there's any way that it's not a roller coaster at this point. There are many things that Jeffrey Siebert has said, and if you don't know who Jeffrey is, he is the park president. There are many, many things that he has said that makes me think that this is a roller coaster. First of all, he said that this has been in the making for five years. What kind of ride is in the making for five years? A new roller coaster. One thing very related to this is that he said Joker was worked on for three years, Daredevil Dive was also worked on for three years, and this new ride has been worked on for five years. So we know that it's something big because those are big flat rides and they were worked on for three years. This is going to be worked on, has been worked on for five whole years. So we know it's something big. Shut up. So I'll definitely be putting it on screen as well, but I just want to be able to have more of a visual and even show y'all too. So basically this is a huge coaster or not necessarily a huge coaster, but it, it's a big ride. It's going to be a roller coaster. If rides like Joker, which is massive, and Daredevil Dive, which is really big for the ride type, if those took three years to plan and design and make, this ride is taking five years, which means it's gonna be a big ride. So you have this entire plot of Sundance and then this little section behind Lone Star Lil's that I think they will be using, depending on what coaster it is. It is actually right across from Roadrunner Express if you've never been to the park before. You'll see Roadrunner on your right and Sundance Theater on your left. That is no longer going to be the case because now that will be whatever this new ride is. And I think it's going to be a new roller coaster, of course, with all these hints. I think there's no way that it's not. So you'll probably see the queue line for this new coaster and then Roadrunner on your right. So you'll see this new coaster on your left with the queue line and then the new new roadrunner is not new you'll see roadrunner on the right side so what kind of coaster could it be this there's a lot of debate on this and i think there's two likely things at this point but i want to talk about the two less likely options that i think are i guess options actually no one of these there's is not an option i was going to say the mystery gerslauer plot pro <laughs> mystery gerslauer project but i really don't think there's any way that'll happen 
So I'm going to replace that with a different coaster that I think is also unlikely. An SNS, not Axis, an SNS launch coaster like Max Force. And I think this is very unlikely because Poltergeist exists. It's getting rethemed, so we know it's not leaving. If they were to replace Poltergeist with a different launch coaster, that would make sense to me. But I don't understand the point of... Whoa. I don't understand the point of getting a new launch coaster when you're keeping Poltergeist. And the problem with Max Force is that it's focused on the launch, not as much the layout. And Poltergeist is very focused on the launch as well. It is focused on the layout after the launch, but the launch is definitely the highlight of the ride. So I think there's a problem with that. I don't think it's going to be that, even though it does take up a very small piece of land and it doesn't take up a lot of room. And there's not a lot of room that they're working with here. I do think that it's not gonna be the new coaster. So there's another option that I think could be happening, but I don't think that it's gonna happen yet. I think that this is something that will come later down the road and in a different area of the park. A gravity group out and back wooden coaster. You might be thinking, Texas Stingray just got added. Are you an idiot? Come on, dude. Why am I even watching this? I'm gonna go leave a dislike. And look, before you leave a dislike, please, please don't leave a dislike. Don't click off either, because I, I have some good information. Yes, it's very likely, actually. Um, or there's a very good chance. I don't think it will be the ride for this year. I think this will be a future coaster, but it's still possible. Like it really is, because uh, Out and Back is very, very different from Texas Stingray. If they take the record from Texas Stingray for height and speed, Maybe that'll make people think less of, oh, it's a ripoff, and think, oh, it's just better. Let's just go ride this instead, which I think is very good for a Six Flags Fiesta Texas. And since it's been plan been in planning for over five years, who knows if they even knew Texas Stingray was going to exist. So yeah, those are just some thoughts on a gravity group. I don't think this is going to happen, though. I think it's going to... Hold on, let me scratch my face. All right, there we go. Sorry, sorry about that. Anyways, I think it will be one, one of two different options. That was absolutely cringe. I think there's two possible options. One, everyone's talking about, and one, no one's talking about. I'm gonna start by talking about the one that everyone's talking about because I don't think I have to do much convincing to make you think that maybe it's the new ride. And that's the SNS Axis Coaster. I was doubting it at first, and then as I think about it more and more, I'm thinking it's way more likely than I was giving it credit for. And well, it really does look like a phenomenal ride. I will say that. I'm definitely hoping this is what we get. I don't know if I think that's what we'll get, but I'm 1 million percent hoping for an Axis at my home park that we're moving closer to for that matter. We're gonna live like 30 minutes away and I'm gonna be going so much more. And I'm also gonna be doing weekly detective work at Fiesta Texas as well as weekly construction updates. Hopefully that's my goal. Um, so definitely hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Anyways, back to the access. I really hope this that's what it is because it looks like a phenomenal coaster. The launch looks awesome the rotations and everything. It looks super smooth, super great. Like it looks like an awesome, really, really unique coaster. It takes up a fairly small footprint. So space shouldn't be too much of a problem when we're talking about this ride. But one thing that could be an issue with this, and this is gonna sound really stupid, but it kind of looks similar to Batman. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Okay, before you click off, before you click off. If you're a GP who knows absolutely nothing about roller coasters, you'll see the axis and be like, but that just looks like Batman. What's different about it? And obviously there is a lot of different things about it. I'm not saying that's a valid argument. What I am saying is that I think it's something that a lot of people will instinctively just think. While I don't agree with that thought, I think that's something that a lot of people are going to just immediately think of. Now, it would be a phenomenal coaster, and I really do think at this point it's the most likely they'll have a lot of really cool theming options. The trains are very themable, I think, especially with the steampunk thing that I think is very, very, very likely. I don't know if it's the most likely option, because option two sounds dumb, but I think it's very likely as well. The second option, get ready, a B&M dive coaster. I bet you heard B&M were, and were immediately like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> and I think that there's a valid, valid no. And I think there's a valid reason to say, no, that's not happening. But let me explain myself. 
All right, so B&M Dive Coaster. It's B&M, you're probably thinking that's too expensive for Six Flags' budget. Emperor, from my knowledge, was only $11 million. And for a roller coaster by B&M, that is cheap. And it's in Six Flags' budget, I think. I think Jeffrey knows that this would be a crowd pleaser and bring in so much people. It has, it's a very high capacity ride. It wouldn't take up too much space as long as they do a smaller one, which I do think it would be smaller. I think it would be somewhere in height sizes between Bear and 1898 at, I think, Efteling and Emperor, somewhere in between that height range, so like 125 to 150 feet tall. It wouldn't be a big b and dive coaster, and it wouldn't be necessarily the greatest dive coaster, and I think an Axis would be a much better coaster in general, but you're forgetting something. Actually, no, you're probably not. Boy, if you don't get- Jeffrey's a genius. And I have no doubts in him. If he thinks it's gonna be a great ride, I know it's gonna be a great ride. I trust Jeffrey Siebert 100% that whatever we're getting next year is gonna be a phenomenal, phenomenal ride. But if we're comparing these two, B&M Dive Coaster and SNS Axis, I think the Axis is more likely at this point, but you can't count out the B&M Dive Coaster. So let's think about this. Okay, so he said five years in the making. A B&M dive coaster could definitely have been a ride that's five years in the making. An Axis, I don't know if that could have been five years in the making. They only announced it like two or three years, two years ago, I think it, in 2019 was the first time they announced it. And then obviously they made the prototype and had people writing it throughout 2020. I don't know if it would have been something that Fiesta Texas was looking into buying for five years now. I really don't know. And that's one reason that I think it might not be the Axis. But other than that, I mean, Jeffrey said this new attraction is going to make history. Now, obviously that makes you immediately think Axis, but you can't count out the B&M dive coaster here because it would be Texas's first and only dive coaster. Assuming I'm not forgetting some weird dive coaster that Texas had some point to, hold on, sorry, my shoulder's super big. Unless Texas had a dive coaster a really long time ago that I don't know about, it would be Texas's first dive coaster, which would still be making history. Gosh, shoulder, stop being itchy, please. You did not hear that. I know, I know you didn't. You, you didn't hear that, shut up. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyways, that's the speculation. This is just my theory. I am, as of right now, this is not at all my final prediction, but right now, I'm predicting an SNS Axis steampunk steampunk themed ride. Now, this isn't all. There is this blimp that they had a big ceremony during the roller coaster rodeo, which unfortunately I was not able to attend, that just was up in the sky and says 2022 on it with a cog on it. Or like a um um what do you call that? A, 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 a thing. A, a, a gear. A gear on it. There we go. I'm actually proud of myself for remembering the word year. Okay, so that's not something to be proud of. Okay, never mind. But anyways, it was a, this balloon. And I think what I read on Facebook, yes, I use Facebook, shut up, stop judging me. It's for coaster teasers. If I didn't use Facebook, I would not be here making this video right now. Apparently they teased Batman and Superman Krypton coaster, both with throwing balloons, hot air balloons in the sky out of the height of the coaster itself. And apparently this is around 125 to 130 feet in the sky, which makes me think it's either a 125 to 130 foot BM dive coaster or 125 to 130 foot Axis coaster. You know what? I'm, I gotta say, I'm super duper excited for 2022, as you all can obviously tell. I think this year is going to be an incredible year, really for the coaster community in general, but especially for Texas. You got Aquaman Power Wave. I believe SeaWorld San Antonio is going to be getting some new rides, which I'll make a video on that in the future. And then Fiesta Texas will be getting a new roller coaster of some sort that is going to be awesome. Now, I don't know why I said now. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I don't know why I'm clapping on every single syllable. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. Hit the notification bell because I'm gonna be doing a lot more updates. I'm going to be the Fiesta Texas detective and I am going to figure this out. I'm going to be going to the park a lot more because as I said earlier, I'm going to be moving a lot closer to the park. I'll only be about 30 to 40 minutes outside of it, depending on traffic. 
so I'm going to be able to go a lot more. If you stay subscribed and click that notification bell, you'll know when I have some updates. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy the video. And you know what? Dis go ahead and give it a dislike if you didn't enjoy it because you're still helping out my channel. Comment down below what you think is coming to Six Flags Fiesta Texas next year. And I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. So averagely to be safe, you want to go one, two, and then it'll show green on the screen, right? That's a lot of room, right? Averagely, most ride offs would just walk by and be like, not even touch it, just And that's how they'll test the seats, right? Okay. Now, for some reason, when they see coaster enthusiasts wearing shirts, here's how they do it. So you go one, two, that's safe. You want to go one more just not make it so obvious. And then they see you and they're like, oh man, what are you doing? What's the trick? And then what they really do is just be like,